Oh, yeah, I thought you I thought you were jumping in there. Yeah, um, I just start by saying, uh, with everything going on, um, you know, with football and all those kind of things, I just wanted to send our prayers um, to Mr. Atkinson. George was a teammate of mine. Um, uh, it's crazy uh, how how quick life can uh, come at you, and uh, uh, I love George. Uh, we had a lot of fun playing basketball at 24 Hour Fitness, as well as playing football games together and competing together. Um, he was always so joyful, man. So happy every single time. You know, he was felt like cut and resigned a whole bunch of times, and uh, every single time he just looked so thankful to be here. So um, I just wanted to say that uh, we're thinking about him and his family, uh, and that we love him. Derek, did, did you have any sense of the the pain? that he felt off and on, like he wrote about it some, but not, I hadn't really seen it. I don't know if you had seen what he wrote. No, I saw, you know, I heard about, you know, what he wrote, obviously. Um, but I would have never guessed, um, you know, that he was struggling, you know, that hard. Obviously, I know things had happened, you know, in the year prior, um, you know, that could, uh, you know, hurt and things like that make you hurt. Uh, you know, but every time I was around George, I, I never would have thought um, that he was hurting, you know, that much. You know, uh, uh, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, it, every time I was around him, he was, you know, full of happiness, you know, full of joy, always joking. Eric, when you see a, a guy like Ryan Tannehill, quarterback, loses his job, kind of get cast aside, and then all of a sudden he gets another chance and it makes the most of the most squadrons from far. Oh, man. Well, this game is funny. Like, you know, some situations are good for guys, some aren't, right? Like, he, he's always been a guy that's made a lot of great plays, especially some of the most amazing uh, throws under pressure you'll ever see. Um, you know, but he's never had, you know, uh, you know, the accolades and things like that, you know, that people would talk about on TV and things like that. But it's no surprise to people that watch the film and compete against him that, like, oh, yeah, he's having a great year. They got a great team. Um, you know, they're really good, both sides of the football. Uh, and that helps, obviously, you know. Uh, you know, we've seen this year just, uh, you know, our team, just everyone playing uh, better. You know, some of the guys we've added, it makes it easier for everybody um, at every position, you know. So, uh, you know, it's a team game. Um, and I think Ryan has found himself in just a spot where he feels comfortable uh, and he's making the most of it. He's a great player. Yeah. Uh, our execution has not been good enough at all. Like executing the plays to every detail um, hasn't been good enough at all. Um, turning the ball over myself, um, that I, I don't, I don't do that. I don't want to do that. Never been something I've, you know, wanted to do or been a part of my game. And so, uh, doesn't matter how it happened or why it happened. It happened. And so we have to eliminate the turnovers. And uh, that starts with me. Even, even the drive, I was a couple of years, but even the drive stuff, the turnovers weren't going the way they had. What do you need to do to get the movement consistently, moving the ball consistently, even without, you know, obviously? Yeah, uh, with that included, you got we have to eliminate penalties. Um, you, you have to stay on schedule. You know, that's the big thing in this league. If you don't stay on schedule, third and two and three is a lot different than third and seven and above. You're gonna get different packages, coverages. They're gonna make stuff up. You know what I mean? Just to beat you. And uh, you know, it's a different game when you don't stay on schedule. And so, um, it sounds cliche, but it's. I mean, it's like that's a real thing that we've. In most of our games, we've done a really good job of staying on schedule like that. You know, making those third and shorts. They're easier to pick up. You know, they're easier to get first downs that way. Um, you can still defense doesn't know you can still run the ball. You know, when you're at those kind of down and distances. But when you're in longer situations, it's kind of like, what's their call? What's your call? Hopefully, it, yours merges and yours wins, right? Um, and sometimes, you know, they, they have a good call or they have this or that. They make a play, whatever the case is. But uh, we eliminate penalties, eliminate the turnovers. We stay efficient on first and second down. Everything will get better. I know we haven't seen all too much of Keelan Doss in game situations, but Coach Gruden said that he's, he might mix up some of the, the, the receiving options, and he's been working hard to learn three different positions. I'm no. wondering. 
how you viewed his progress and how the rapport building with him has, has been going. Yeah, I love Keelan. Um, thought he, uh, even back in OTAs and training camp, thought he worked, uh, uh, whenever after the draft he was here, you know, uh, you know he, I thought he worked extremely hard. Uh, he's someone, uh, you know, when we got him, I couldn't believe he was undrafted, you know, uh, that was crazy. Um, because you see his talent, you see his work ethic, how smart he is for where, learning this offense at one position is hard enough. He's trying to do it at all three. And uh, he's been doing a great job of that. Uh, and where we're at right now, he, we need him. You know, we need him to play all three spots. You know, Co like Coach said, he's been moving some stuff around, as we've seen uh, all throughout the year, uh, just trying to find the best situations for everybody. And, you know, his name keeps popping up. Well, we could put him here, you know, and uh, that's a good thing for Keelan. Does coming home kind of help with those execution problems, those penalties of playing at home? Absolutely. Coming at home, we, lo we love being home, you know. Uh, when you've been on the road a long time, it's always nice to walk in and see your wife, you know. Um, you know, and so you get to come home and see your family. You get to walk into the stadium and see our family, uh, play in front of your family and friends, you know, things like that. Um, it's a lot quieter when you have the ball on offense at home, sometimes. Um, you get towards those end zones, it gets pretty loud. But, uh, you know, playing at home, uh, you know, it's, it, it definitely makes things more comfortable, but it's still a, still an NFL game, and uh, they're still battling for first place. They're, they're a playoff caliber football team, so we have our work cut out. Speaking of, speaking of home, Derek, we've only got two regular season games left in the Coliseum. Yeah. What makes the Coliseum so unique? Yeah. It's our fans. Our fans make it that way. Um, the black hole, you know, you don't go to any other stadium and see something like that. You know, people have tried to imitate it. People have tried to steal their team's name and nation behind it, but there's only one. It's Raider Nation. It started here, um, and it'll always be the Raider Nation. And I think that there's that mystique about the Raiders when they come, when people come, you know, when rookies or people are starting to come play here, and I'll talk to them after the game, and be like, man, it's so cool to play here. Like it's, it's something that is like, like it's an experience for them, you know, not just a football game. And so, uh, it, it's definitely our fans that just make it, make it that way because whether we've been 0 and 10 or we've been, you know, whatever, trying to get a playoff spot, our fans are selling that place out, and they're always here. What's that one moment? You know, uh, my my favorite moment was when I, bro I I've said this before. It's funny when I broke my ankle. Um, I broke my ankle, and you could feel the just the air go out of the stadium. And I remember sitting there, and uh, as I was driving away, just the applause and the cheers. It was like for whatever reason, in that moment, I felt um, the love back. You know, and uh, that was that's something I'll always remember. You know, because I I give everything I have for for our team and. Uh, you know, you give so much, it's always nice to hear it back. After the game on Sunday, you, uh, you credited the, the chief safeties with making a couple of really nice plays on the, on the two interceptions. When yep. you look back at those, is that, is that the case, or is there anything from those two plays? That you well, definitely on the first one, you know. Um, for sure on the first one, uh, you know, he, was, he had his responsibility and fell off of it. I mean, that doesn't – we've thrown how many passes this year in the NFL, uh, you know, in the NFL games, and that's the first time – you know, I've thrown that ball and someone fell off their responsibility and did that. You know what I mean? Um, so you get to week whatever that was and you don't expect certain things like that to happen. But he's a great player, you know, and great players do some great things sometimes. Uh, the the second one, I I just throw it somewhere else next time. After the game, uh, I don't know if so, it's been, uh, Tara meant that he said that uh, there was some, he felt like their defense was able to, to pick up some things just based on pre staff formations. Yeah. Yep. Is that something that you go back and evaluate or look at or take into consideration all of your tendencies? No, not for me. That's that's stuff for, you know, the coaches and things like that. Like for me, I just I just execute the plays, you know, that coach wants me to do and do it to the best of my ability, to be honest with you. Um, you know, when it comes to all that kind of stuff, you know, we had some things, some tips on them that worked for us too. You know, it's that's how the game goes. A couple more guys. Yeah, uh, you know, it starts with just being efficient uh, on first and second down. You know, uh, there's different – the game changes, you know, uh, on certain down and distances. Um, and we've had a rough two weeks. I've had a rough two weeks. It's time to get back on track. It's time to get back in our stadium. It's time to be efficient on offense. It's time to win. And uh, I think that's what I'm excited. We get a chance to go compete against a really good football team. 
that's the beautiful thing about this game. You know, you go, you've rewind two weeks ago, we were the greatest story in the NFL, you know, and two weeks later we suck again, you know what I mean? So I think we'll be all right. You know, we're just going to keep grinding. We're going to stick to what we do. Jared, you out of uh, the Titans defense on the field? They fly around. You know, they've had some injuries, obviously, um, you know, and uh, in some recent kind of weeks, but uh, the style of play, the level of play does not change no matter who's in there. They, they fly around, they're physical, they're aggressive, uh, and we definitely have our work cut out for us. You know, it, it, Coach said it wasn't going to get easier after that Jets game, and it's just going to keep getting harder and kind of love it. Last Derek, one, everyone in the NFL, every player has aches and pains by now, but when you see uh, Josh Jacobs acknowledge like, how bad his shoulder has been for weeks now and to see the way he runs, is, is it impressive to you? Oh, his shoulders hurt? <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, yeah, see, I, when I tell you he's special, it's stuff like that that I knew about y'all didn't know about. You know, um, you know, like you said, you know, everyone plays with something. You know, uh, you know. Hopefully, it's always listed on the injury report um, and things like that. Every team does, you know. Uh, but uh, Josh is he's special because football means a lot to him. You know, um, I've been around some people before that have caught some kind of injuries. Um, and you're like, dang, like, wish they would have played through that. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, if Josh wasn't able to play, I would completely understand with what he's dealing with. But the fact that he keeps suiting up and going out there and running, not only running, but running with the style that he runs with, um, I don't think enough can be said about that guy. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.